The tallest mega projects represent some of the most audacious feats of engineering achieved by humanity. Pushing the boundaries of construction, these projects redefine our skyline and challenge our perception of what is possible above the ground. Today, we will delve into the tallest mega projects and unveil the staggering height and complexity involved in making them a reality. Let's travel to the United States, where the Gateway Arch is located. At 192 meters or 630 feet, it is the tallest arch in the world and the tallest man-made monument in the Western Hemisphere. It was designed by Finnish-American architect Eero Saarinen in 1947 and completed in 1965. The arch's exterior is clad in stainless steel, making it the world's tallest stainless steel monument. This material choice not only contributes to its gleaming appearance, but also reflects its surroundings. Building the Gateway Arch was a feat of engineering, requiring the precise fabrication of 142 stainless steel sections. Moreover, the arch is hollow, containing a unique tram system that carries visitors to an observation area at the top, offering sweeping views of St. Louis and the Mississippi River. Its construction cost approximately $13 million at the time, which is around $100 million today. It's time to travel to Europe for one of the tallest wind turbines across the globe, called the Nordlink Wind Turbine. Standing at a colossal height of 246 meters, this turbine is taller than most skyscrapers in Europe. Equipped with a rotor diameter of 220 meters, the Nordlink wind turbine can generate up to 13 megawatts of power, enough to sustain approximately 20,000 homes. This makes it one of the most powerful turbines in operation today, dwarfing the average turbine, which typically provides between 2 to 3 megawatts. The Nordlink's blade length is around 107 meters, each blade being almost as long as a football field. The turbine features cutting-edge technology that includes a lightning protection system, ensuring safety and operational continuity during the frequent thunderstorms common in northern Germany. The Nordlink wind turbine contributes impressively to Germany's climate goals. By reducing the need for coal and gas, it prevents the emission of approximately 42,000 tons of CO2 annually. This clean energy generation is a critical step towards Germany's commitment to phasing out nuclear power by 2022 and coal by 2038. It's time to move on to neighboring country Denmark, where the Great Belt Bridge stands as the tallest bridge in the country. Officially known as the East Bridge, it boasts the world's third longest suspension bridge span. With a monumental stretch of 1,624 meters between its towers, which themselves ascend to a majestic height of 254 meters. This bridge is part of the Great Belt Fixed Link, a multi-structure project that also includes a box girder bridge and a tunnel, collectively spanning a comprehensive length of 18 kilometers. Constructed at a cost of over $4 billion, it was an investment that streamlined travel drastically, cutting down transportation time between Copenhagen and Odense by more than an hour. The East Bridge carries more than 27,000 vehicles each day, effectively doubling the potential for inter-island commerce and connectivity. Its construction required 19 concrete piers, the largest of which weighs approximately 530,000 tons. We travel to Japan next, where an even taller bridge is located. Spanning the Akashi Strait, the Akashi Kaikaio Bridge holds the title of the world's longest central span of any suspension bridge, measuring a staggering 1,991 meters. Standing 283 meters tall, its towers are higher than any other suspension bridge, and when compared to architectural icons, they exceed the height of the Statue of Liberty by about 93 meters. The construction of the Akashi Kaikaio Bridge was a feat of precision engineering requiring over 1.4 million cubic meters of concrete and enough steel wire to encircle the globe seven times. Inaugurated in 1998, the bridge was designed to withstand winds of up to 286 kilometers per hour, severe earthquakes, and harsh sea currents. This resilience was immediately tested as it successfully withstood the Kobe earthquake in 1995 during its construction phase. Staying in Asia, let's move over to China for an extremely tall dam. The Beihetan Dam, located on the Jinshu River, is one of the most formidable hydroelectric power stations in the world. At a height of 289 meters, this arch dam has the capacity to produce a massive 16,000 megawatts of power through its 16 turbines. 
Designed for more than just power generation, Bayhetnan also plays a crucial role in flood control, irrigation, and river navigation enhancement. It creates a reservoir that holds 20.6 billion cubic meters of water, almost double the volume of Lake Mead, the largest reservoir in the United States. Upon completion, Bayhetan Dam has significantly bolstered China's renewable energy portfolio, aligning with the country's ambitious goals to reduce reliance on coal and cut carbon emissions. It serves as a critical element in China's West East Power Transmission Strategy, which aims to supply the eastern regions with clean, renewable energy generated from the western provinces. Crossing the globe, we travel to the United Kingdom for the tallest building in the country. The Shard rises majestically to a height of 310 meters, making it the tallest building in the country and the fourth tallest in Europe. Its 95 stories are encased in 11,000 glass panels, covering a total surface area of 56,000 square meters, which is enough to cover eight football pitches. This neo-futuristic skyscraper, completed in 2012, was designed by the renowned Italian architect Renzo Piano, who envisioned it as a vertical city. The Shard houses offices, luxury residences, a five-star hotel, and multiple top-tier restaurants, all offering panoramic views of London. The construction of the Shard was a monumental task, utilizing 243,000 cubic meters of concrete and 36,000 tons of steel. This structural marvel can accommodate up to 85 people at any one time, roughly equivalent to the population of a small town. Visitors can ascend to the observation deck, located on the 72nd floor, which offers an unrivaled 360-degree view of the city, stretching up to 64 kilometers on a clear day. The Shard's dynamic facade reflects the changing skies, seamlessly integrating the building into the fabric of London while minimizing heat absorption through its energy-efficient glass. Staying in Europe, we travel to Paris for the world-famous Eiffel Tower megaproject. When completed in 1889 for the Exposition Universelle, it was the tallest man-made structure in the world, standing at 324 meters high. Constructed from 7,300 metric tons of iron, the Eiffel Tower comprises 18,038 individual metal parts, joined together by 2.5 million rivets. This engineering marvel was designed by Gustave Eiffel, whose firm specialized in constructing bridges. Remarkably, the Eiffel Tower was intended to be dismantled in 1909, but was spared due to its utility as a radio telegraph station. Today, it attracts more than 7 million visitors annually, making it the most visited paid monument in the world. The tower's three levels are accessible to visitors, with restaurants on the first and second levels and the highest observation deck accessible at 276 meters. Each of the Eiffel Tower's four pillars rests on slabs of limestone with foundations sinking down to depths of about 7 to 15 meters, an architectural necessity that supports the massive iron lattice structure. The Eiffel Tower's iconic silhouette has inspired numerous replicas worldwide but none matched the original's architectural elegance and historical significance. Traveling to the opposite side of the earth, we pay a visit to New Zealand. Standing at a commanding height of 328 meters, the Sky Tower in Auckland is not only the tallest freestanding structure in the Southern Hemisphere, but also an engineering and telecommunications beacon. Its height surpasses the Shard in London, underscoring its prominence on the global stage. Constructed using 2,000 tons of steel and 15,000 cubic meters of concrete, the Sky Tower serves as a critical link in New Zealand's telecommunications network, featuring 21 transmission antennas. The Sky Tower can withstand wind speeds of up to 200 kilometers per hour and earthquakes with a magnitude of up to 8.0 on the Richter scale, owing to its deeply secured foundation which penetrates 15 meters into the earth. The Sky Tower's lighting, which uses energy-efficient LED bulbs, often changes color to support charitable causes, intertwining functionality with community engagement. Making our way back to France, it's time to talk about the Millau Viaduct. Soaring to a height of 343 meters, it holds the title of the world's tallest cable-stayed bridge. 
A viaduct spans 2,460 meters with the longest single span reaching 342 meters and a deck width of 32 meters. It features seven concrete piers with the tallest pier standing at 245 meters high, which is more than twice the height of the Statue of Liberty from base to torch. The bridge was designed by the British architect Norman Foster and French structural engineer Mitchell Verlojux. The construction, completed in just three years and opened in 2004, aimed to alleviate summer traffic congestion on the route from Paris to Spain, which it has successfully done by shortening travel time by several hours during peak periods. The viaduct not only serves a practical transport function, connecting the Clermont Ferry into Beziers and Montpellier, but also acts as a tourist attraction in its own right. Approximately 20,000 vehicles cross the viaduct each day, and its construction has boosted local economies by increasing accessibility and reducing transportation costs. It's now time to check out the Petronas Twin Towers in Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. Reaching a staggering height of 452 meters, this project is the tallest twin structure in the world and surpasses the Willis Tower in Chicago by 10 meters. These architectural marvels held the title of the tallest buildings in the world from 1998 to 2004 until surpassed by Taipei 101. Constructed using 33,000 tons of steel and 160,000 cubic meters of concrete, each tower is supported by a 120 meter deep foundation, which is among the deepest for any building. The design, a brainchild of Argentine-American architect Cesar Pelli, was inspired by traditional Islamic art reflecting Malaysia's cultural heritage, with a floor plan based on an eight-pointed star. The towers are linked by a double-decker skybridge at the 41st and 42nd floors, which is the highest two-story bridge in the world. Featuring 88 floors of office space, the towers house the headquarters of Petronas, Malaysia's National Petroleum Corporation, as well as other corporations. The construction of the Petronas Twin Towers employed a cutting-edge curtain wall system that is designed to reduce heat and enable energy-efficient cooling. But the towers can get much taller than that. Next up is Landmark 81, soaring majestically over Ho Chi Minh City, Vietnam. It reaches a towering height of 461 meters, making it the tallest building in Vietnam and among the top 20 tallest worldwide. The building consists of 81 floors and covers a floor area of 241,000 square meters, used for a mix of residential, retail, and leisure facilities, making it a multifunctional vertical city. Its design is inspired by the bamboo stalk, a symbol of traditional Vietnamese resilience and elegance. Landmark 81 boasts a luxury hotel, high-end apartments, and Vietnam's highest observatory deck, offering panoramic views of the city and the Saigon River. The development was completed in 2018 by the Vingroup conglomerate, with a design by the renowned architectural firm Atkins. The tower is part of a larger $1.5 billion Vinhome Central Park development project, which aims to transform the city's skyline and elevate its international profile. Strategically positioned along the banks of the Saigon River, Landmark 81 is not only a commercial and residential hub but also a beacon for eco-friendly practices, featuring vertical gardens and sustainable architecture elements. It's time to travel to the seas now for the Trolla platform, located in the North Sea. At 472 meters tall, it is not only the tallest structure ever moved by mankind but also surpasses the Petronas Twin Towers in height. This gas production platform is primarily stationed in the Troll Gas Field, about 80 kilometers northwest of Bergen, Norway. Constructed with prodigious dimensions, Troll A's total weight is over 1.2 million tons, including ballast, a mass greater than the heaviest man-made objects ever moved. The platform's legs are each 1.2 meters in diameter, extending 303 meters below the sea level into the seabed. Commissioned by Statoil, the platform began operations in 1996. Remarkably, it features accommodation to house up to 200 workers who manage its daily operations. The deck carries all the equipment necessary for drilling and gas extraction, arranged to maximize efficiency and safety. The platform's elevation above the water is 369 meters, which is taller than the Eiffel Tower, providing a stark perspective on its monumental scale. 
Trollet is also equipped with cutting-edge technology to handle daily gas production of about 83 million cubic meters, the high efficiency of which underscores Norway's leading role in the global energy sector. Let's travel to Russia next to inspect the Austin Kino Tower, located in Moscow. Completed in 1967 during the Soviet era at a height of 540 meters, the Austin Kino Tower was designed primarily for telecommunications and to mark the 50th anniversary of the October Revolution. It holds the distinction of being the first structure outside the United States to exceed 500 meters in height. The tower's construction incorporates over 55,000 cubic meters of concrete and 3,000 tons of steel, a testament to Soviet engineering prowess. Austin Kino's antenna allows for broadcasting television and radio signals across a thousand kilometer radius, covering an immense swath of Russia's populace. It is equipped with multiple observation decks and a revolving restaurant, offering panoramic views of Moscow, making it a significant cultural and tourist attraction. The tower's fire in 2000 led to extensive renovations, including the installation of advanced fire safety systems, ensuring its resilience and safety for future generations. Austin Kino's unique lattice structure is not only functional but also iconic designed to withstand severe Russian weather conditions and seismic activity. Next up, it's time to have a look at the world-famous One World Trade Center. Also known as the Freedom Tower, it stands as an indomitable pillar in the New York skyline at a patriotic height of 541 meters, including its spire. This makes it the tallest building in the Western Hemisphere, surpassing the Willis Tower in Chicago by 124 meters. Its 104 stories are encased in a shimmering facade of 2,000 pieces of prismatic glass, designed to reflect the sky and refract light, representing hope and endurance. One World Trade Center's design incorporates a reinforced concrete base, clad in blast-resistant materials, spanning 57 meters high, which is unprecedented in scale for such safety features. Above this base, office floors begin, featuring floor-to-ceiling windows that offer unobstructed views of Manhattan. The building's total floor area spans 3.5 million square feet, accommodating businesses, restaurants, and broadcast facilities. Its observation deck, located on the 100th to 102nd floors, provides visitors with breathtaking 360-degree views of New York City. Staying in North America, let's talk about the CN Tower, located in Toronto, Canada. At 553 meters, this icon was the undisputed tallest freestanding structure in the world from its completion in 1976 until 2007. Imagine standing atop the Sky Pod deck. At 447 meters, you're taking in views that stretch over 160 kilometers on a clear day. Designed to endure the fierce Canadian elements, it incorporates 40,500 cubic meters of concrete and over 4,500 tons of steel. This robust construction is designed to withstand wind speeds of up to 418 kilometers per hour and is equipped with a sophisticated lightning attraction system that handles around 75 lightning strikes per year. Function meets form with the tower's practical use as a key telecommunications hub for Toronto. It broadcasts radio and television services across the cityscape, proving that this landmark isn't just for show, it's an integral part of daily life in Toronto. The journey up can be as thrilling as the view. In one of six high-speed elevators, ascend at a rate of 22 kilometers per hour to the main pod, which features not only the glass floor, but also a revolving restaurant that offers a 360-degree sweep of the city below over a 72-minute rotation. It's time to travel to South Korea next. Rising majestically above Seoul, the Lot World Tower stands as a pinnacle of architectural innovation and the tallest skyscraper in South Korea at 555 meters. Surpassing the One World Trade Center by 14 meters, it is ranked as the fifth tallest building globally. Designed to withstand the challenges of extreme weather, Lot World Tower features a sleek, tapered design that minimizes wind pressure, a necessity in its lofty position above the bustling city. The structure is built with over 52,800 cubic meters of concrete and supported by a weighty 430,000 tons of steel, amounting to more than the iron used in the Eiffel Tower. 
Lot World Tower also features the world's fastest double-decker elevators, known as Sky Shuttle, which can travel from the ground floor to the 121st floor in one minute, reaching speeds of 600 meters per minute. But what about the tallest clock tower in the world? Perched next to the Grand Mosque of Mecca, the Abraj al Bayt clock tower isn't just a skyscraper, it's a colossal marvel towering at 601 meters, making it one of the tallest and most striking man-made structures on Earth. Its clock face, the largest in the world, spans 43 meters in diameter, easily outclassing London's Big Ben by five times. Built at a staggering cost of $15 billion, this megastructure is part of a seven-tower complex that redefines luxury in scale. Above, a 93-meter tall spire topped with a 23-meter golden crescent makes it a beacon visible from miles across the city, guiding pilgrims like a lighthouse of faith. With the world's largest floor area, the tower hosts an Islamic museum and a moon observation center which provides astronomers and scholars a unique vantage point for sighting the moon, crucial for the Islamic calendar. It's time to travel to the United States for the tallest mast on planet Earth. The KVLYTV mast, towering at 629 meters, stands as the tallest structure in the Western Hemisphere and the tallest guide mast in the world. Erected in 1963 near Blanchard, North Dakota, this engineering feat surpasses the height of other monumental structures like Tokyo Skytree and Shanghai Tower when considering guide masts alone. Engineered to enhance broadcast range, the mast extends television coverage across the eastern North Dakota and northwestern Minnesota plains. It utilizes approximately 30 kilometers of guy wires, which are anchored in three directions to stabilize the structure against the formidable winds typical of the Great Plains. Constructed with high-strength steel, the mast weighs around 9,000 pounds at its pinnacle, despite its towering presence. The mast's foundation is embedded deeply into the earth, ensuring structural integrity and resistance to torsional forces caused by harsh weather. Visibility of the mast from great distances requires aviation safety measures, including numerous red warning lights along its length, to alert aircraft. It's time to visit Tokyo next for the Tokyo Skytree. Towering at 634 meters, it was completed in 2012 to serve as a primary television and radio broadcast site for the Kanto region, ensuring clearer transmission as high-rise buildings proliferated. Constructed with about 36,000 tons of steel, Tokyo Skytree features a unique seismic proofing design with a central concrete column independently secured from the surrounding steel frame. A method inspired by ancient pagodas which allows the structure to withstand earthquakes with minimal sway. The tower's color, officially called Skytree White, is based on a traditional Japanese indigo blue hue, blending modern design with traditional aesthetic considerations. The lighting of the Skytree alternates between the icky sky blue and Miyabi purple, inspired by the patterns of Japanese folding fans, which illuminate the tower beautifully at night. Tokyo Skytree has two observation decks at heights of 350 meters and 450 meters, offering panoramic views of Tokyo and, on clear days, Mount Fuji. The base of the Skytree is a bustling commercial hub named Tokyo Salamachi, which includes over 300 shops and restaurants. But the absolutely tallest structure on planet Earth is of course the Burj Khalifa, located in Dubai. Completed in 2010 at a height of 828 meters, the superstructure took more than 22 million man-hours to build. The tower features 163 floors above ground, including corporate suites, residences, and the Armani Hotel. It also boasts the highest observation deck in the world, located on the 148th floor at 555 meters hosting the world's second highest swimming pool on the 76th floor and the world's highest restaurant on the 122nd floor. The Burj Khalifa is not only a feat of engineering, but also a luxury destination for global tourists. The project is also pivotal for technological innovations such as the telescopic spire comprising more than 4,000 tons of structural steel. Given its height, the Burj Khalifa is designed to withstand Dubai's hot summer temperatures with its reflective glazing, and the exterior temperature at its top is significantly cooler than at its base. 